Hi, I'm Jim Gordon. Welcome to another Small Cap Power Discussion. Joining us today is Mark Levy, CEO and Chairman of Norsemont Mining. Mark, great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Good to have you. Okay, um, as we've been doing with everybody with these great discussions, I, you have a long history here that we want to get into in the company, but let's start again with some of your history. You have been around this block many times. Uh, talk a bit about what you've been up to uh, with the company and your, your past history. Sure, yeah, I've been around a little while. <laughs> um, we've done stuff in tech and mining, and we uh, built up one of the last mining companies I built up was called Norsemont Mining, so it's got good pedigree yeah, <laughs> name yeah. and we built that up in 2011 sold that off to HUD Bay for 520 million and we took control of uh, Pedikia Minerals which was another mining company that we sold to Inmet for 350 million and Coal Hunter we sold for 57 million and Rio Silver we got rid of that for 5 million maybe we shouldn't have but uh, <laughs> at the time it was good yeah. and I thought you know we would never be doing another mining deal because that was 10 years ago and I couldn't see that far ahead and we did a bunch of stuff in other sectors and got quite entrenched in the cannabis sector. And uh, I was one of the three founders of Aurora Cannabis, which was you know the second largest cannabis company in Canada. We also helped take Cureleaf Public and a few others. So spent a lot of time and then uh, things came full circle back into the mining sector, came alive back in 2019-20 and we bought, got back into the gold space. Well, let's talk a bit about that, and specifically Chile. Um, I want to make sure I get this, uh, correct me if I'm mispronouncing this, Chocolimpe? Yeah. Okay, correct. beautiful, I got that right, excellent. Yes. Right. Uh, let's talk a bit about uh, that project, why that project, and why Chile? Sure, um, we've done a lot of work in South America. A lot of the team that I've operated with have worked in South America, um, and typically our, our, our group likes to acquire assets from majors that have Pre previous work done and uh, and a good history and, and usually you can acquire these assets for good price point with a lot of good data and uh, we came across through our network uh, relationship with COPEC which is the largest conglomerate in Chile mm -hmm. and uh, they were exiting the gold sector and looking at assets in the uh, copper sector actually near my old project in Peru right. and so you know we decided hey this is a good opportunity and uh, decided to uh, acquire the project from them in 2019. I put up a bunch of money to hold things up till we can get our money and our team together and as as we did that um, the market started to move a little bit in the gold space and COVID obviously helped exasperate yeah, the run in yeah. gold and so uh, here we are. Let's talk a bit about that deal too. Uh, I'd love to know how you uh, you acquired it and uh, from whom, because it's an interesting story sure. uh, of what happened there. Yeah, so I mean, like I said earlier, I mean, COPEC had made a decision consciously to leave the gold space in Chile. Uh, this project would probably be, you know, putting tens of millions to their bottom line and they were kind of chasing the hundreds of millions and they invested a billion dollars into a copper project in Peru. And through a relationship that we had, a lawyer that we knew in Chile, uh, we got introduced to these COPEC guys and looked at all the assets that they had for sale. And we thought this was best opportunity and good timing. And, you know, gold wasn't maybe as, as sexy as it was. Yeah. And so it was a good opportunity. And the team that we had had a lot of experience. And some of the directors that we work with uh, have good connections in Chile. So it was easy to pull together our technical team. and do some due diligence on this even during COVID times. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we decided to pull the trigger and acquire this asset. And a nice uh, kind of promising and positive point on that was that, that the company that you bought it from also took stock, not just here's the, here's the cash, see you later. Yeah, it was a cash and stock deal. It involved some of the parties, uh, uh, particularly, uh, a group of uh, Chilean lawyers were involved in, in, in uh, brokering the deal right. and uh, believed in the equity and the upside of the project. So they took a big equity component, actually. It was a smaller cash component and a larger uh, equity component. Uh, let's talk about some of your uh, most recent news releases. Um, you've got a number of them. Share yeah. with our viewers. Sure. Uh, I guess over the course of the summer, we were a little bit quiet because of COVID and Getting a little bit of uh, getting access to the project was a little challenging, but we we did manage to get a lot of progress made. And um, 
we've put out a bunch of news recently about, uh, I guess, all the work that we've done over this summer and fall. We've spent millions of dollars on the project. We were quite busy, head to the ground. Not a lot of news out, but now it's starting to flow. And we got our first uh, cartapenensia, which is a key uh, permit to be able to drill. And what we did is uh, we drilled, uh, there's about 500,000 ounces of gold sitting in dumps ready to be processed. So we, we did some sonic drilling, 66 holes down 37 meters to test those dumps and get a better definition on it. Um, we did some geophysical work, which we recently put out news on uh, this week, I think, uh, talking about some of the deep geophysics we've done and some of the targets we've discovered, which are really exciting because originally the, the deposit itself is about five and a half million ounces of gold drilled only to 70 meters. And that's what attracted us to the project mm -hmm. is typically these systems, uh, high sulfidation epithermal systems, they go down two, 300 meters. So our thesis was, you know, if we can drill this another 200 meters, 300 meters, we can take this resource from five and a half million to our target of 20 million ounces pretty easily. Um, and um, there's been work done on the project by Rio Tinto back in 07, 08 that discovered that there's a copper gold porphyry uh, that probably drove this whole gold silver system. And so that's kind of like the needle in the haystack that if we could find that, um, that would even you know, add an incredible amount more value to the company. So we, we ran some MT, which is some deep geophysics, and right. uh, it goes down two kilometers, which that, that technology didn't exist 10, 20 years ago. Uh, and we've discovered that our thesis was, was, is right based on um, the several pits that we had, but those pits were really like a hand. There was several pits, which we thought we can drill deeper, and now the geophysics has shown up that they're all interconnected like the palm of your hand. Yeah. And so that technology has shown us that we are not in fact dealing with several deposits. It's one very large deposit, or it could be that we actually discovered the porphyry, which is probably the engine that drove this whole system. We don't know until we drill test it, but we're pretty excited. The technical team I know is walking on air, yeah. which obviously is a good thing for us and our shareholders. And you know, speaking of drilling, one of the problems we had is we weren't able to drill over the summer. And uh, obviously that's an exciting time. And we got a, our second drill permit now, and uh, we're embarking on our uh, maiden drill program actually uh, this week. And finally, uh, we also have our five and a half million ounce gold equivalent uh, resource that we will be bringing up to 43101 standards by Q1 2022. That would be a huge milestone that hopefully attracts a lot of institutional interest at that time and hopefully provides a good reward to our stakeholders as well. Very nice. And you so, mentioned uh, in the interview about uh, your team, uh, I don't think I'd be overstating by calling world class. Uh, you wanted to mention, of course, some of the players on your team. Sure. So we've got um, Dr. Adrian King, who came to us from Tech Resources. He ran their international exploration. Um, he's lived in Chile for, I think, about eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. uh, he's hands-on on the project. Art Fries, who worked with me in Norsemont 1.0, uh, who's a very credible geologist who, who was heading up Gold Corp and Wheaton River geologically. And, and he was on the board of Norsemont 1.0. Uh, he's also involved uh, hands-on to the project technically. Um, and, and as well, we've got our man on the ground, John Curry, who's been you know, in South America operating these projects for 27 years, lives in Chile, which is very convenient for us. Mm -hmm. So we've got a good round technical team. We've got some advisory board members as well. Um, David Lang is probably the most prominent guy in the business. He's done you know, 25 billion in M&A and he's ran Quintana Resources. He's a founder of uh, Fortuna Solar Mines. I mean, he's every company that he's been involved with is a billion dollar plus success. And he actually put Chocolimpe into production back in the early 80s. Oh, wow. So he's, he's that engineer. Yeah. And so he came to us, which obviously it's probably an exciting thing for him to see us revisiting this opportunity and he understands it. And so we're glad to have him on our team. And then uh, one of his colleagues who helped run Endeavor Mining and uh, chair of Wheaton River Precious Metals International, 
Uh, Bill Katsuris is also an investor and advisor to the company as well. And you know he's done 25 billion in M&A and raised four billion in capital. So we've got some really good guys that understand the mining sector uh, on how to create an exit for investors, how to advance a project technically. And so we've got all the angles covered. Uh, and one thing that is unique about our project is that it was a former producer. Yeah. So it's easy for us to say that we can fast track this to production truly. And we've inherited actually, you know, according to David, uh, I think the last time we spoke, he had mentioned that there's about $150 million US of infrastructure, you know, water, power, 3,000 ton a day mill. Uh, we've got a camp, an ADR effluent plant, water permits in place. So this was kind of a dream opportunity and I think uh, you know this is going to be a lot of fun uh, doing the work and getting this uh, through to pre-feasibility and feasibility study here. Hey we should mention Mark before we uh, wrap things up that uh, we'll have a live webinar coming up on December 7th. People can find out more information by going to uh, norsemont.com also check out uh, Norsemont's social media accounts uh, live webinar sign up for that uh, that is December 7th. We'll be here again with Mark. Mark, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, great updates on Norseman. Always great to talk to you. Thank you. You're quite welcome. It's uh, Mark Levy. He's the uh, CEO and Chairman of Norsemont. He joins us here on our Small Cap Power discussion on location. I'm Jim Gordon. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel and we appreciate you watching. Thanks very much.